the information in this narrative is not meant to take the place of information from a qualified professional but it is some information to help get your head around a few things in order to make sure that your professional is helping you in the way that he or she should if we've been working on something with our dogs like nail trims or other grooming or helping our dog who's afraid of a family member or something else and it doesn't seem to be going well it's probably time to just take a step back and familiarize ourselves with a few psychological terms classical conditioning, desensitization, thresholds, conditioned emotional responses. I will provide a few links and references in the description box below this video. But I also urge folks to do some outside reading of their own, maybe some psychology books, especially some that mention Pavlov and his dogs. Classical conditioning is basically about associations. If every time somebody rings a bell, I suck on a lemon, eventually, even without a lemon, if I hear a bell ring, I might have a sour taste in my mouth. Normally when helping our dogs, we apply counter conditioning. We want to change their feelings about something. So if they hated nail trims, we want them to learn to like nail trims. If they're afraid of the family member. We want them to learn to like the family member. So we start pairing a thing we dislike with a thing we like. But it's really important that we get the order correct. The scary thing has to predict the fun thing or the tasty thing. If I show my dog a glob of peanut butter and then try to trim his nails, now the peanut butter predicts nails and it won't help the dog feel any better about nails. As a matter of fact, we might make the dog hate peanut butter. Presenting the scary thing at the same time as a fun or tasty thing might also be futile. For instance, if you let your dog lick peanut butter off the refrigerator while you're trimming the nails, that might distract them enough to let you trim his nails, but you're not really counter conditioning when you have both the two happening at the same time. You need the scary thing to happen first and then the fun or tasty thing immediately afterwards. What often goes well with counter conditioning is desensitization. Basically we present the scary thing in a less scary intensity first and then we don't move up to something more scary until they're happy about the scary thing at a lower intensity. For example, if a human is afraid of spiders, we won't present a tarantula and then give the human a bowl of ice cream. We might ask the human to look at a picture book of spiders and then feed them ice cream or give them a hundred bucks. If a dog is afraid of men, we're not going to sit the dog in a man's lap and hand her treats. We will present a man at 150 feet away and feed our dog treats. If a dog is afraid of nail trims, we don't clip and then treat right away. We might start with just presenting an instrument or just touching the dog and treating, and then we move up. But we don't take it to a harder step until we've seen a positive conditioned emotional response, or CER, at the previous step. For instance, if I'm just touching my dog's foot and he starts looking forward to getting his foot touched, he starts looking happy, relaxed, or a wag in his tail, then I can move up to maybe touching his foot with an instrument. But I don't move up until I see the dog happy about the previous step. If the dog looks unhappy at the previous step, then I back it up even further. Like instead of touching the foot, I might just reach towards the foot within five feet, draw my hand back and treat. So far in classical conditioning, we looked at the order, introduced the scary thing first, then the fun or tasty thing. We looked at the intensity, Make sure that the scary thing is at a non-scary intensity before moving on. Next, we'll look at the value. Whatever the reward is, whatever the fun or tasty thing is, it needs to be very high value. High value is in the eye of the dog. We might want our dog to really love those wheat biscuits because they have a cute picture on the package, but that might not cut it when we're doing counter conditioning. They might need something really tasty, something really smelly, usually something wet and stinky. Talk to your vet about the best thing to give. But normally it's going to be something like boiled chicken or cooked steak. 
or maybe sardines make sure you get the ones that don't have the packed in salt and the value is going to be better if it's something that the dog doesn't normally get if your dog gets steak every day then steak might not be suitable for counter conditioning so we looked at classical conditioning the order intensity and value We've looked at desensitization, introducing the stimulus or the trigger at a lower intensity. And we looked at conditioned emotional responses, making sure our dog is happy at one level before moving up to something a bit harder. Another term that we should familiarize ourselves with is threshold. Basically, you want to make sure the dog is well below threshold before we move on to a next step or before we continue where we are. We want the dog calm and relaxed or happy before we move on. If a dog is growling or snapping or biting or running away, that's a sure sign that a dog is well over threshold. But less obvious might be some calming signals. Some things that a dog does can mean different things in different situations. Like a dog yawning might mean the dog is sleepy. But if a dog is yawning while you're trimming his nails, he's probably not sleepy or bored. He's probably uncomfortable. Yawning is one calming signal. Other calming signals might be the eyes darting back and forth, nose running, the dog rolling over on his back, lip licking, head turning to the side, ears pinned back. So now we know about counter conditioning, desensitization, conditioned emotional responses, and thresholds. And I mentioned the term trigger or stimulus. Those are the things that we're working on. So if a dog is afraid of men, then the man might be the trigger or the stimulus. If a dog is afraid of nail trims, then the grinder might be the trigger or the stimulus. Another thing we want to consider is how we increase criteria. How we make the process a bit harder and harder each time. For instance, if a dog is afraid of a nail grinder, you might start with turning on the grinder around 30 feet away and tossing treats. But then you don't just jump right into grinding the dog's nails next. We might start out at 30 feet. Once the dog has a positive CER, then we might turn the grinder on at 25 feet. Then we might turn the grinder on at 20 feet. But if the dog is looking scared the whole time, then maybe just turning the grinder on is too much. It's already putting the dog over threshold. So we need to look for something that's sort of like a grinder, but not as scary as a grinder. Just like my earlier example of using a picture book of spiders. So maybe turning on an air purifier or a dishwasher or something might have that same type of humming sound, but not as scary. Or maybe an electric toothbrush sort of kind of looks like a grinder but isn't and maybe isn't as scary. So we don't move on to the grinder until the dog looks happy about the electric toothbrush, the positive CER. We don't touch a dog's feet with our hands until we've been able to maybe touch the dog's shoulder. Or we don't touch the shoulder until the dog is happy about us reaching our hands forward and not touching. Or we don't reach our hands forward until the dog is happy about us approaching. We start at where the dog is calm and relaxed and we don't move up until we see that positive CER. The information I provided can apply to just about anything that you're trying to make your dog feel better about. But be aware there are some things that a dog really doesn't need to be exposed to and you could probably spend your time on things that have to be done. For instance, your dog has to have nails trimmed. So that's something you probably want to work on. But a dog really doesn't need to go to a dog park. So if your dog hates it at the dog park, instead of trying to counter condition that, it's probably just to not go. If your dog doesn't want to be petted by strangers, then that's okay. You can give your dog treats for watching strangers from a distance, but you never really need to let people touch your dog. Now maybe the vet does need to touch your dog, so you can desensitize to the vet or the vet staff, but you really don't need to desensitize to strangers. But if that is something you want to work with, then of course work with a professional on keeping your dog well below threshold. If you're listening to this narrative as a part of our nail trim series, then check out the other links. I'll have some video demonstrations of starting below threshold and increasing in teeny tiny increments. 
and I'll also be talking about positioning. And I also have several videos already done on nail trims. I think about 12 or 13 of those. So see our pet education channel and our nail trim playlist to see those videos. Also, if you Google Stubby Puttin' Nail Trim Saga, you can see several blog posts on nail trims. And if you Google Stubby Puttin' Grooming, you'll see our grooming videos. I almost forgot to add, classical conditioning is strictly about associations. The dog does not have to do anything to get the high value treat or the high value reward. So if a stranger walks by the house and your dog barks, you still feed him a treat because basically stranger equals food. You're not waiting for the dog to be quiet. You're not waiting for the dog to be calm. Whenever the stranger appears, you feed food. Of course, ideally you want the stranger to be far enough away so your dog doesn't get upset or you want to pop the treat before the dog barks, but you don't have to. Stranger equals treat. If you trim your dog's nails and he snatches his paw away, just let him do that and feed him the treat. If he snaps at you, growls at you, barks at you, still feed the treat because nail trims equals treat. And counter condition is going to go much better if you treat the nail trim each time or you treat the scary person each time or you treat the scary noise each time. But if your dog does bark or snap or pull away or run away, that's information for you. Now you know that you've put the dog way over threshold. You need to go ahead and well, give the treat and then stop the procedure and then back up to a point where you were successful before. Back up to a point where the dog is calm and relaxed and don't move up again until you see a positive emotional response or a positive conditioned emotional response.